Hi Church, thanks for joining me once again here in our studio in George, South Africa. I wanted to be with you, but unfortunately we have to broadcast due to circumstances currently. But we are going to get into the Word today and I believe today is going to be a blessing. Many people are going to be touched by the Holy Spirit as we get into the service. Today's message is going to be called Biblical Mind Therapy. Now that sounds quite strange, but you will see as we carry on with the message, you will understand what it's about and it's going to be a blessing for you. I also just want to tell you that we're so excited about the Art Center and we believe that this center is going to be a center for uh, the kingdom of God where people are going to be able to come and pray, glorify God, bring glory to God. And we are excited about that. Uh, we're starting this week with it. Uh, just to show you, uh, we, we're having uh, prepared there some counseling rooms and some prayer rooms. We had a meeting yesterday with some leaders that uh, we are planning to have prayer actually in the city of George uh, all the time. So people are going to be able to come in and pray. We're also encouraging prophetic prayer. The difference being that we are praying not as a response to what's going on in our country, but we are praying so that the Lord will reveal to us how to pray, what to pray for. Uh, and not just pray as an emergency mechanism. I know it's necessary to pray. It's critical to pray, but it's also critical for us, I think, to come to a point where as we pray, we hear what the Lord is saying, what to pray for. So we're not always responsive in our prayer, but we are actually preemptive in our prayer. And where it's not just uh, responding to things that are happening, but we can actually attack the enemy at his weakest point. So you can see there's the prayer rooms, then also uh, the lecture hall where we're going to be having some academy classes. We're looking forward to that. That That's a smaller hall where we possibly will have portion of the Christian library and the distribution of Christian material. And then the back of the yard, uh, you can see there where we plan to build the bigger lecture hall number two. And uh, that is sort of the plans of it. And you can see we're probably going to divide it into two. We're just looking at that. And then that is the, the front part. There's the existing building with the bathrooms. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, it has existing premises on with a tenant there. And we plan to take over this entire building as the Hizot Center in Merriam Street, George. So we are praying and we are asking you to pray with us and to be excited with us as we believe that God is going to touch people. Soon you will also find out as I send you the information that we are looking at what we call a planted school or a hosted school, Bible school, where we want to actually have Bible schools inside the churches. The reason for this is Matthew 28, where it says we must go and teach all nations. It's an instruction. Uh, it's, it's not to go and just preach the gospel, but it's also to teach people to obey. Now, in the first year of our Bible school curriculum, we deal a lot with discipleships. We do courses like Christian Basics 1, Christian Basics 2, you know, those kinds of courses, the, the, the values of Christ, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the Old Testament survey, that's all done in the first year. The second year, we do leadership training where we focus on church leadership, home cell leadership, uh, you know, how to do certain things in a leadership function and also your family, how to manage your family. And in the third year, we do advanced where we are um, talking to people about advanced ministry and that is pastoral care, pastoral training, hermeneutics, homiletics. It's the job description of the pastor all there in the third year of the curriculum. So it's phase one, phase two, phase three. But we see that phase one can really be an excellent foundational discipleship phase for the church to get people to that position where they are prepared for the work of service in the ministry, where the second year then takes those who aspire to and are involved in ministry to the next level. And we want to actually offer this inside the local churches and have those Bible schools that we call hosted, planted in two years where the, where the church themselves, if they want to actually take over that Bible school and we just play a role of administration. So since 1935, Calvary Academics started in the U.S. as a Bible school turned into a university. Their curriculum has been in South Africa now for many, many years since the 80s. Uh, there's been thousands of students enlisted in South Africa at some stage, over 250 Bible schools doing the curriculum. 
It's not a curriculum that pushes an agenda, like a lot of people talk about the prosperity gospel or, you know, stuff like that. No, but it does lift out the word of God. So even in today's message, as we are entering into where we have to look at our minds and we look at how we're responding to the circumstances. I mean, the Bible school will help us and it's really helped me where we've renewed our minds. We go into the school. Uh, currently, we're having class say, every Sunday and Sunday afternoon and it's not a waste for us because every time we re reiterate God's word the course curriculum is full of uh, training materials so it's not a question where you are just being trained and and uh, it's not word based no everything in the manual is in God's word just to show you uh, a manual here how it physically looks I mean this is Christian basics this is Christian Basics 1, and you can see the course material is in there, uh, and then you work through the lecture, and if you want to get credits for the Bible school, not necessarily that you want to, then you complete the workbook, and the workbook will take you and focus on the materials, uh, and you can fill in the workbook, and then you can get credit for the course, but that's just sort of a quick, quick overview. I wanted to tell you about the course. I wanted to offer that to you. I mean, like I say... Uh, from the Bible School perspective, the Passion for Christ Bible School is now 22 years old. So it's not since yesterday. The curriculum is since 1935. And God's really blessing it and using it across the nations of the world in 153 countries. And you now soon will have an opportunity to be part of that. And uh, just watch this space and we will give you the information how you can do that and what the context of that situation is. But let's get into today's message because that's why I'm here. I want to share God's word with you as we talk about biblical mind therapy. And you might think to yourself, what is biblical mind therapy? What am I talking about? You see, since a young boy, I've been battling. And many times I've, I've battled with depression. I've, I've, if I have to be honest, since a young boy, I can remember battling and I didn't understand why I was battling like that. Then I went on drugs. I remember started sniffing stuff. And all of a sudden I started feeling just better every time I had that euphoria or that mind altering uh, experience with drugs. And that put me in a position where I, thought of, I sort of thought that drugs was the solution. So I started using drugs, drinking. And you know my testimony, I suppose. Uh, I then ended up coming to Christ. And that day, I will never forget when I received Jesus, a miracle happened. I sensed joy. I sensed peace. I, I sensed this heaviness lift off my heart. But it didn't stay lifted. It came back again. And through many years, I've, I've tried to find out. I, I made it my purpose to study into theology and to do theological studies, do my degree in theology. I studied business. But then I also studied a lot of psychology. I enrolled in in a psychology in Psych 101, and I enrolled in a lot of courses to try and find out where I would find the solution to permanent, stable, joy, happiness. I think what we all are looking for. But in these days that we are in, it's actually become worse. Now, at some stage, I tried to commit suicide. At some stage, I was under psychiatric care. But I didn't find that psychotherapy or any of those things worked. So then I started really studying and I started looking at the history of psychology, the history of psychiatry. I looked at, at mindfulness. I looked at cognitive behavioral therapy. I looked at Martin Signalman and the positive psychology movement and all of those things. And I found that many of those things were parallel to what I saw in the Bible. As I was studying theology on the one side, and I was studying psychology on the other side. I saw that there were many similarities. And I looked at sort of uh, uh, J.E. Adams. Uh, in third year, I did uh, pastoral counseling. And we were studying J.E. Adams' books on, on Christian psychology. Started looking at what is uh, Christian counseling? What is Christian psychology? What is uh, biblical counseling? What is those meth methods? And to simplify everything that I've sort of learned and the, the stability that I found, I found it in God's Word. And that's what I want to share with you a bit on today as we're getting into this message. And I don't want to make this message long. So I want to get into the message and just give you some information what really helped me. Now the first thing that I want to say to you is that we are going through difficult times in our life currently. I mean currently there's a lot of things happening. 
the current state of the world and the current state of, of the church is panic, it's stress, it's anxiety. Uh, even if we look at the statistics, mental illness is on the increase. Uh, one of the most prescribed medicines currently is antidepressants. If you go look at the stats, there's what they say an epidemic or a pandemic of mental illness. The suicide is increasing. People are increasingly more and more unhappy. Now, there's a lot of studies out. There's a lot of books that I've read. I can't give you all the information here, but there's a lot of reasons why humanity is moving towards uh, currently being very distressed as, an, as a race, as a people. And even the Bible predicted this. I mean, we, we look at the Bible and we look at a scripture in Luke 21, 26. It says there men, men will faint uh, because of terror. Men will faint because of terror, because of apprehensiveness, uh, because of what is coming over the world. So it's prescribed, if you look at the, at the other translations, you see people will faint from terror. People will be terrified at what they see. Uh, it says here, men will faint from fear and anxiety over what is coming. Men will faint from fear and expectation. I mean, all of these different translations, if we want to express it in the original language, we can see that what it is saying in essence is that difficult times has come and is coming upon the planet. And many of you watching this today, you've experienced those difficult times like I've experienced through my years. Thank God I was serving in the ministry for so many years. Thank God I was, I was working in business. I was getting the best of business practices, the best of what the Word of God offers in Bible schools, in Christian institutions, and then also looking at psychology, the development of cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness therapy, and uh, uh, looking at authors like Caroline Leaf, cleaning up your mental messes and all sorts of things who switched off my brain and toxic thinking and just the mind-body connection and also the connection with, with what psychology and psychiatry to a degree has discovered, which was already in the Bible for so many years. And I found what worked for me because many times in my life, I went through tremendous difficulty and I, I went through what I would call downers, you know, periods when things were going wrong, when things weren't perfect and when I would have to actually then realign myself with God's word. And I started picking up patterns in my own life. I started picking up patterns. I started seeing that, you know what? There's certain things that I neglect there's certain things that I don't do that I know what I'm supposed to do because these are things that I've discovered over a 30-year period. And if I don't do these things, I find my life burning, if I can put it that way. I find myself on fire and not in a good way, in a bad way, where I really end up sometimes sitting 3 o'clock in the mornings, holding my head, crying in front of my house, shaking or you know, men don't want to show emotion, so we try and hide those things. Getting panic attacks or anxiety attacks in the middle of the night and going through those things. I remember one morning in East London, as I was looking at the Umtata branches that we had at, at the company that I worked for, and the entire Eastern Cape province was my responsibility, 55 stores. I was there and, and I was overwhelmed by the problems we had in King Williamstown, in East London, in Umtata. And I just remember having a meltdown one, one morning in my, in my hotel room in East London and really just asking God, God, give me guidance, lead me, guide me. And these are the kind of things that God showed me during those difficult seasons. There's been a lot of them uh, since, uh, like I said, since I was a young boy, I, I realized that you know, if I had to go to a psychiatrist or psych psychologist, they would probably diagnose me with something. But I knew this was part of the human condition, uh, part of the curse working against us. And the Lord has given us the answers. The answers are in God's word already for us. But we need to discover them. And that is where this message comes from. That is where I discovered uh, what I like to call a biblical mind therapy. And I want to share with you, just if you allow me, just a few of those things. The first one, the first point I want to make is the living sacrifice. This is of paramount importance, Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, let me say this about the living sacrifice. The living sacrifice is not a once-off 
occurrence. A lot of times we think it's a once-off situation. It's not a once-off occurrence. We have to continually bring ourselves. If you go look at the tenses in this text, we have to continually bring ourselves, present ourselves as a living sacrifice. This is the one thing that I saw when, when you talk about biblical mind therapy. When I crashed and burned, it was when I did not bring myself as a living sacrifice. What does this mean? Well, the living sacrifice means a few things. It means, number one, that you actually lay down your life of sin, that you bring your sin that you bring your disobedience and you sacrifice that on the altar of grace. And you say, Lord, I don't want to do it my way anymore. Because a lot of times when we, when we get stuck in sin, when we are sacrificing to false gods, when we get stuck in the wrong ways and the wrong inclinations of our heart, we find ourselves becoming psychologically unstable and unhappy because we cannot live with ourselves. We're not acting in accordance with our own beliefs and our own convictions. In fact, this, is, this was found by J.E. Adams as one of the worst causes of mental illness. Even uh, people that go from neurotic states to psychotic states were people who did not deal with things in their lives, that they were not happy with their own behavior, and therefore they were not sacrificed. The other part of the living sacrifice is the fact that we lay our lives down. We give it all to Him. If we look at the living sacrifice, we are talking about our dependence shifting from self to God. We, we move our dependence from ourselves to God and we say, God, we are depending on you. We are looking at an increase of sensitivity to his voice where we say we become sensitive to your voice. So as we are getting into biblical mind therapy, I want to ask you, are you a living sacrifice? Have you laid your life down? Have you given Jesus everything? Or are there areas where you are disobedient as a disciple? Where you are not willing to take up your cross and follow Him? Are there areas where you've said no? Or even areas where you've become involved in besetting sin, where sin has caused you to block those areas out? And the Holy Spirit cannot guide you. The Holy Spirit cannot lead you. You've grieved the Spirit. You've quenched the Spirit. And you are no longer a living sacrifice. Now you might sit there today and be in a terrible depressed state and not connect the dots. Not say, you know what, I'm depressed because I was disobedient. I'm depressed because I'm not listening to the Lord. I'm depressed because I'm not being a living sacrifice. I have, I have not willfully surrendered everything. I'm depressed because I'm pursuing my own purpose. I'm chasing my own inhibitions. I'm chasing my own hopes. That is why I'm not a living sacrifice today. So I want to just ask you as, you as you consider this one point under the biblical mind therapy session that we're having, just to lay down those things, to give it all to God. And, and you say, what must I do? I say, repent today. Repent and give it all to Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Now, this is the foundation, guys. So what I'm saying is we have to do this. We have to give him all. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. In fact, this is the point where most believers cannot continue. The, the guy said to Jesus, Lord, let me first go bury my parents. Let me first go bury my mother. Let me first go bury my father. Let me first put my children through school. Let me first do this. Let me first do that. That is the lack of the living sacrifice. And you, you will never connect this, but, it, but because you have a purpose, because you have a destiny, because you have a godly call, it will cause dissatisfaction in your spirit that will again cause dissatisfaction in your mind. And you will find yourself not happy, not joyful, depressed, but you have not brought that living sacrifice. So before we get into the other three that I'm going to mention to you today, or the other four that I'll mention to you today, you need to stop right here and lay that life down. Lay everything down. We all get sucked into this world. We all get prone to do what the world wants us to do. But can you lay your life down today? Jesus said, if you put your hand on the plow and you look back, you're not worthy the kingdom. And today you have to lay it all down. This is your day and this is your time where you sacrifice yourself. This is what I've learned over 30 years, people. I've learned 
that I've gone through brokenness, I've gone through betrayals, I've gone through difficulties, I've gone through backstabbing and, and head eating, I've gone through very difficult things in business and in ministry. But the one thing that I always say to God is help me just to lay myself on that altar. Help me to do this. Because once I've done this, I've laid the foundation to be totally joyful, totally happy. And this is the foundation of biblical mind therapy. So as we, as, as we conclude that point, let's go to point number two. Because you have to do one before you can do two. Then you can renew your mind. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. Once I was reading this and I was thinking, okay, the renewal of the mind, how do we do this? Let me tell you what this prompts us to do. This is quiet time. The renewal of the mind is not just reading the Bible. Yes, it is, but it's much more than that. This is spending quality devotional time with the Lord. And then we, re, we get reprogrammed according to God's word, according to God's promises, according to what God says. So think of this. If, if you've laid yourself as a living sacrifice in point one, the renewal of the mind is easy to do because now you, you are sacrificial. You are in a position where you've laid your life down and say, God, what do you want me to do? And How do we find this out? We find this out by spending time with Him. Because as we renew our mind, we open ourselves up for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to take us from glory to glory so that we can step into our purpose. And what I like about this scripture, what it says is, yes, we can move from a good to acceptable to a perfect will. He will become our priority and our priorities will be clear. And as we, moved into, as we move into the perfect will of God, we will experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. But it will take something from us because if we've sacrificed ourselves and we've said, Lord, I'm laying it down. Lord, I repent of my sin. Lord, I want to make you number one in my life. I want to really experience good mental health good mental status throughout my life. I don't want to end up in a psychiatric facility. I don't want to end up having to drink pills for the rest of my life. I don't want to end up having to go to therapy. I don't want to end up feeling like I'm up and I'm down like a seesaw mentality. Then the Lord says, okay, if you don't want these things, then lay your life down as a sacrifice and then renew your mind so that my spirit can guide you into the fullness of, of my glory so that you can step into the power areas of the spirit manifesting the power of the holy spirit functioning in the gifts of the spirit and releasing the power of the spirit through your life and you will experience joy unspeakable and then you step into the creator's intent for your life so can't you do that today as you watching this just make that sacrifice lay yourself down and then renew your mind so that you can step into the perfect will of God, the perfect, not the good, not the pleasing, no, but let's step into His perfect will for our lives. Then we will also be awake. We will be vigilant and in a position where we can demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And we can take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So we have to take captive every thought. Now think of this as a thought comes into your mind. That so thought has a source. It's coming from somewhere. The thoughts don't just fall into your mind. I used to think that thinking is just a natural human pastime and a natural human response. No, it is, it is definitely strategic. And a lot of times our thoughts turn towards what we see on social media, what we see on the television, what we see and hear in conversations. Also what the enemy is saying to us through people that can govern our thoughts. Now let me tell, tell you this. If you want to be in a mental mess, if you want to uh, always be asking for your pastor to pray for you every day because you're feeling so depressed, you're feeling so down, then you have to be somebody who does your own thing 
you don't surrender your life, you don't sacrifice yourself, you don't give yourself, and you don't renew your mind, you spend no time with God, and then you just think of anything that comes into your mind. Even if it's the devil planting it, you enjoy those thoughts, and then you will end up being distracted. You will end up being dis destroyed by the enemy because of your thinking. Even your physical body will become ill. Um, uh, Caroline Leaf says in a book that they've now determined that 90% of diseases has a, a mind-body connection. The others obviously come through genetics and all sorts of other things, but 90% is a conservative figure, has a mind-body connection, and you can think yourself to death if you don't take thoughts captive. You might think that living your own life is a good idea. You might think that that gives you a freedom. It doesn't give you a freedom because if you move out from under the cloud of God's protection, the enemy gets you. He steals, kills, and destroys in every area of your life. So as we're working through these aspects, we're talking about biblical mind therapy. We're saying a living sacrifice. Let's look at it. Living sacrifice. We're saying renew your mind. And then we say take captive every single thought. Don't let those thoughts dominate you. Don't let those thoughts just fall around. Take them captive. Number four, we then say now you're in a position to grid and prepare your mind as it says in 1 Peter 1.13. So you grid the loins of your mind or you therefore prepare your mind for action. So your mind is is a fine-tuned piece of machinery ready for action. You see, mental health will not just come to you naturally. You have to have a strategic approach. And this is what I asked the Lord for. For many years, I said, Lord, how can I be happy? Is, is when I get more money, when I get a new car, uh, when, when I get a salary increase, or when somebody buys me a present or Christmas or my birthday, is that what's going to cause me happiness? When I listen to a message in church and it's a good message and I feel good, what they call feel good messages, is that what's going to make me happy? You know what? When the Lord started me, when he, when he gave me the keys in my life and this I've lived for many years and you can ask those around me, I don't allow myself to fall into mental mess. I don't allow myself to be distracted, not to be able to do what the kingdom of God is, is saying to me to do, what God has called me to do. I don't allow myself to not be the light for a minute so that anybody around me steps into something dangerous because of the darkness that I've allowed to dominate my life. I don't allow it, not because I'm a strong person, not because I'm a unique uh, d divine person. No, no, I'm not. I'm actually somebody who comes from a history of being diagnosed as mentally ill. How did I get out of this mental illness? How did I get to a point of victory? Well, this is what I'm telling you today. This is the strategy that I've given you today and that we're speaking about today when we talk about biblical mind therapy. And let me tell you, and I know I keep going back to this, it starts with the living sacrifice. This is exactly where it starts. And this is where it stops with many Christians. Because even those watching and listening today, many of them will not be willing to lay their lives down. They will not be willing to lay their lives down. They will not even get to number two and number three and number four. Because they will stop right at number one. Because they will count the cost and they will say the price is too much. Look, the price is nothing compared to the glory that we are going to receive from Jesus in heaven. And also nothing compared to what we are experiencing here, right here on earth now. As we rule and we reign with Christ. We are already experiencing His glory. We are already experiencing His power. So I want to challenge you today. To present yourself as a living sacrifice. I want to challenge you today to renew your mind. To have spiritual discipline. To spend time in God's word. To spend time with God's spirit. So that the spirit can guide you. And you can step into the perfect will of God. Being empowered and endued from on high with the Holy Spirit power. As you live and move in him. And then to take captive every thought. Not allow anything that's not of God to to, to, to build a, a nest, like I said, any, anybody can have a bird dung on his head, but it's difficult and, and you have control when that bird wants to nest in your hair. 
So don't allow him to nest, even though the enemy has planted thoughts and he's bringing thoughts through people, through circumstances. You don't have to allow those thoughts to seed in your, in your mind and to grow into destructive trees in your mind. Then you are prepared to grid your mind. You have that authority. Then you will also be able to meditate upon God's word. Think and meditate. You know, meditations become a word. And this is the final one that I'm going to speak to you about as we end of this message. Meditation is a, is a very negative word sometimes because we, it is is connected to Eastern myth, mysticism and all of those things. But it wasn't created by them. It was created by God. God wants us to meditate. He says to Joshua, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. In Joshua chapter 1, and then he says, meditate upon my word. When? Day and night day and night so what is the christian mind supposed to produce in terms of fruit what are we supposed to think about what are we supposed to talk about i'm not saying we're being oblivious to things that happen in our lives but our dominant thinking our dominant meditations should be whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, we think upon these things. Philippians 4, 8. In another translation, it says, meditate on these things. This requires action. This requires action from you and me. We are supposed to take the action. We, it can't happen by itself. This is something that, that I made a big mistake with when I was young. I used to think that this will happen naturally. I used to think that this is just something that happens automatically. No, my brother, no, my sister. In love, I tell you today that a great portion of the church, a great portion of the church is meditating on stinking thinking. They are meditating on negative things. They are controlled by negativity. They are constantly disturbed by things that they see. And because they focus upon those things, because they look upon those things constantly and they think upon those things, their lives are dominated by the negative aspects that the enemy is bringing across their television and their, and their computer screens. They're dominated by that. Maybe today as you're listening to this message and you're thinking to yourself, what is this biblical mind therapy? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to handle this? Where do I start? I want to say to you this way. Let's look at it in a practical way as we end off this message today. What can you do when you switch off now and you go back to your room or to your sitting room? What can you do? Well, you can start by presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. You can say, Jesus, I give you everything. If there's sin in your life, if there's wrong things in your life, you can repent of those things. You can say, Lord, I want to make you number one. Lord, I know I've seeked and I've looked for a lot of things, but now I want to seek first the kingdom and understand that everything else will be added unto me. I want to use this biblical mind therapy, not because it's Richard's idea, because, but because I sense the Holy Spirit speaking to me today and saying to me, I have to change. I cannot carry on like this. I want to start with a proper foundation. I want to start by laying my life down. He who wants to save his life will lose it. And he that loses it will save it. I want to lay my life down today. Then I also want to make a commitment number two. To renew my mind. To spend time God in your word. To spend time in what you are teaching me. To allow the Holy Spirit to speak to me. To allow time for devotion where I can just sit and await your ministry. And be obedient to what you say. Then, Lord, I want to make sure that I don't allow any stinking thinking in my mind, any thoughts that cross my mind that I know does not line up with your perfect will that I discovered under the renewing of the mind. Point number two, I will take those thoughts captive. I will not allow them in my mind in Jesus' mighty name. Number, number three or number four, I will grid myself. I will prepare my mind. So that I am self-controlled. So that I am always vigilant and awake. Because I know the enemy is prowling. And I want to be ready for him when he comes. I will meditate. And I will monitor my meditations. 
whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, those are the kind of things, the admirable things, the excellent and praiseworthy things, those are the things that I will think upon in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you as we end off this message today. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you are also our God. And we want to glorify you. We want to praise you. We want to lift your name on high. We know that you, God, can do all things. And we open up our hearts. We open up our minds. We open up everything today, God, as we ask you to touch us, to set us free. To take us from glory to glory in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for those today, God, those who, th that are downcast, those that are feeling, Father, that they cannot do it anymore, those that feel that they've had enough, Lord. I pray for each person now. I pray that you will touch them, every person in the ministry, God, every person in this church, God. I pray for every single person, for your glory, for your power, for your anointing to be upon them. Lord, lead them. Father, from glory to glory. Show them, Lord, now open up their hearts. I also pray for those that are suffering, those that are suffering from anxiety disorder, those that are suffering from schizophrenia, those that are suffering from depressive disorder, Father, or bipolar disorder, those that have been labeled. I free them by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, God, that you will show them, that you will show them, that you will show them and open up their hearts so that they can see how they can be free and free in Jesus' mighty name in every area of their lives, God. And now I pray that you will take them from glory to glory in Jesus' mighty name. Let your protection be over them. I speak the blessing over them and I activate the blessing of the Holy Spirit in every area of their lives. As they receive it now, I pray the activation of the blessing in their health, divine health. I pray the, the activation of the blessing in their finances. Let them have overflow so that they can be a blessing and give God in Jesus' mighty name. And I praise you and I worship you and I glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for watching and I want to thank you just for being obedient, not to me, but to the Lord and to open up your heart to what He's saying to you today. You've heard the Word of God. Now it's up to you to open your heart and allow that Word to grow. God wants to use you in a mighty way. He is going to raise up a mighty people and you are part of that generation in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Till we see again. God bless you. May He keep you. May He take you from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen.